and hello YouTube, this is Thomas Judge back once again with another short YouTube reading guide series. Today is the second video of a series of three that walks the correct reading order of the Thunderbolts by Marvel Comics. To create this reading guide, I have read the 339 comic issues that comprise the entire Thunderbolts run, including all the essential spin-offs and tie-ins, and I've used that to make this reading map. Now, during the series, I use some terms that I use quite often, like volume with a big or a small v, and I refer to things like readers who are type P or type J. These are terms I use for all my reading guides, and if you want to understand a bit more about it, I'd recommend you check out the introductory videos for my larger guide series, such as this one that I did for the DC New 52 by reading almost 4,000 issues, or this one that I did for the Top Cow Artifactivist, reading almost a thousand issues. I'll link to them both in the description below, but I'm not going to go over all the details here because this is a short guide, so I don't think I need all that introduction stuff. So with no further ado, let's jump into it. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is the entire comprehensive reading map for the Marvel Thunderbolt. Now, this is the whole map zoomed out. Let's just jump into where we were last time. So in the last video, we actually covered a lot of the stuff on the top here all the way down to this volume you can see here which is new thunderbolts collection three right of power now this last video took us to this volume and ended here because this is where we reverted back to our legacy numbering with issue 100 of the thunderbolts we also went back to the original title of thunderbolts after that brief diversion of being called new thunderbolts so with that out of the way let's move on so the next volume, and the first place we're going to start today, is this one here, which is Thunderbolts Civil War. This collects issues 101 to 105. Now, this is available as a trade paperback, but the key Civil War issues within it are also collected in the beautiful Civil War Maxi Event box set you can see here, where it's in the volume called The Underside. If you're not familiar with these maxi event box sets, Marvel does a few of them for a few key huge events, and they're absolutely beautiful and well worth the money. However, do be warned, if you do get this beautiful box set, this volume, the underside, only collects issues 103 to 105, which means that issues 101 and 102 are not collected. So moving back to the map here, they're only collected in this trade paperback volume. Now, while that trade paperback can be read by itself, it honestly does require some background knowledge of the Civil War event to do that. I'm not talking much knowledge, a quick skim on Wikipedia will do, but you, do, but you will need to have some idea, you do need to have some idea of what the Civil War event is. So there you have it, you had a bit of warning. Um, in terms of the map and, and, and the sort of things that we've done here, you'll see I tend to or I've started to put these little thumbnails on the side to give you an idea of what events are happening at the same time as the ones that I'm talking about. For what it's worth, Civil War is an excellent event and well worth reading. Be warned, do not get this confused with Civil War II, which is a terrible event and well worth avoiding, and we're going to discuss it in our next video. So back to the map, after the Civil War volume, we then have this volume here, which you can see is called Thunderbolts Guardian Protocols. It contains issues 106 to 109, and it follows on smoothly from the last one. Now, the interesting thing to see here is after Guardian Protocols, you'll see on the right, we have this picture of Zemo standing on top of a tank as a standalone circle by itself, which is kind of the end of that line. Now, that's because this is a single mini series spinning off and out of Thunderbolts, which I would highly recommend. The name is a bit weird, it's got two subtitles, it's called Thunderbolt Presents, colon, Zemo, colon, Born Better. It's weird, but it's well worth reading. I won't give spoilers, it's a great series, and whilst you don't need to read it, if you do want to read it, this is the point in your reading order you should. So next, what we're going to do, is just pan out a little bit, we're going to enter what a lot of people refer to as the Ellis era of Thunderbolts. And the reason for that is that this is when Warren Ellis gets involved. You see... Thunderbolts issue 110 sees another change to the direction of the series. Not only with Warren Ellis um, joining and, and introducing a whole new team of Thunderbolts, but also a lot of changes just to the Marvel Universe status quo with this fallout of Civil War. So, for example, the Thunderbolts now are tasked with capturing unregistered superheroes in the fallout of Civil War. And it's stuff like that, which is why you really need to read Civil War and get a grasp of what that's about, just to kind of understand where we are here. Or, of course, just read the Wikipedia. So, just looking in here, if we zoom in, this first volume of the um, Warren Ellis run is called Thunderbolts Volume 1 Faith in Monsters. Now, the reason it's called Volume 1 isn't because it starts with an issue 1. It's not a Volume 1 in any real kind of sensible way. It's only called Volume 1 because it has 
volume one written on the spine of the, of the collection is really frustrating the issues in it start off with issue 110 so this isn't a good starting place unless you specifically want to start with the warren ellis era what this means in a practical sense is that the spine of this collection confusingly has a volume one written on it but you can ignore that it's available as a trade paperback and as a hardcover they both have the picture you can see here on the cover and in terms of the names and issues collected within i'll show them here so this first volume of the Warren Ellis run contains Civil War Choosing Sides, which is a one shot. Then Thunderbolt issues 110 to 112. And then you need to read Thunderbolt's Desperate Measures, which is a one shot. And then a one shot called Civil War The Initiative. Then you can finish off by reading Thunderbolt's 113, 14 and 15. That is the reading order in that order. Back to the map here. So we've looked here at Thunderbolt's Start of the Warren Ellis era. This is volume one. Faith in Monsters. Before we carry on with the Warren, um, the Warren Ellis era, though, I would recommend you take a short detour here to this series called Penance. It's a five-issue mini-series. It's actually called Penance: Colon Relentless. So, yet another subtitle. Now, Penance himself gets a little bit of a bum rap during the Civil War or post-Civil War era because he's labelled as a bit of an emo goth whinger. I can see where that's coming from, but in my opinion, this character is portrayed and written in a really interested way in this series, and I would highly recommend reading this series. You don't have to, though, but it, it does end up making um, a lot more sense or helping other things make a lot more sense, so I really would recommend it if you can. After reading Penance, we then carry on with the Warren Ellis era, and here we have the second volume of his run. So this is called Thunderbolts Volume 2, Caged Angels. Now, again, when it says Volume 2, that's only because it's written on the spine of the physical collection. There's no other reason that it should have a 2 on it, but hey, there you go. Again, it's available as a standard size paperback and a standard size hardcover, and the cover for both of those is the one that you can see here. This contains issues 116 to 121, and just read them in that normal order, that's it. No one-shots, nothing else. So that is the Warren Ellis era. And like I say, the circle on the top is volume one, the circle on the bottom is volume two, and then Warren Ellis leaves. Oddly enough, the next collection also is called volume three. So it has a three on the spine if you go to buy it or you see it in a bookshop somewhere. Um, and it's called Thunderbolts Volume 3 Secret Invasion. I don't know why it's called Volume 3, because that kind of implies a continuation of Warren Ellis's work. But he's left at this point. Someone else has come on board. But anyway, we'll talk about it in a second. The important thing is the issues in here aren't necessarily straightforward. You can see the issues here. This volume contains Thunderbolts at Breaking Point. That's a one shot. Thunderbolt International Incident, another one shot, and then Thunderbolt Reason in Madness, which is another one shot. Then, after reading those three, you should read issues 122 to 125. Now, please note that Warren Ellis didn't write this. Again, like I say, God knows why this was labeled as volume three in the spine, and Ellis was instead replaced by Christos Gage after issue 121. What I will say about the volume you can see here is that is a major tie-in to Secret Invasion. So if I just pan back a bit, you'll see on the uh, on the right-hand side, I've got a little thumbnail of Secret Invasion to give you an idea that that's what's happening at this era of, uh, of Marvel. So um, it's really closely tied in. I'm not going to be doing a Secret Invasion reading order here. What I will say is that if you own this Secret Invasion omnibus, which, by the way, I highly recommend, this omnibus does not contain the Thunderbolt issues you need, which I personally feel is a glaring oversight because I think they're really important issues for the Secret Invasion events. But anyway, they're not included in this omnibus, so for what it's worth, I would recommend reading the Secret Invasion core event to really understand what's going on here. Even though it's not absolutely essential, you can read the Wikipedia synopsis, but you will be doing yourself a disservice. This is a perfect opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to read the Secret Invasion event if you haven't read it. It is, it is well worth it. You will be spoiling yourself. Okay, so we have the map here, and you can see that something slightly odd happens where things kind of split up on the map. And the reason for that is because of this. After... It's the Secret Invasion event, we enter something referred to as the Dark Reign era, which was a time for Marvel Comics when the bad guys seemed to be winning all over. It was a year of comics where everything was really dark and really gritty and really depressing, 
with villains at the forefront. As such, it's really important you remember this. Dark Reign isn't a specific comic book. A lot of people act like it is, and a lot of comics of this era have Dark Reign in the title, so Fantastic Four Dark Reign, or Deadpool Dark Reign, or things like that. But it's not actually a specific comic, it's not even a series, it's not even really an event. It's more of a thematic, line-wide branding or theme. Now, maybe due to this, most people seem to think that what happened was that the Thunderbolt series during the Dark Reign era got temporarily renamed to Dark Avengers. And then it was Dark Avengers for a while, and then after that it went back to being Thunderbolts. That is not true, and that is a very common misconception. So if we go back to the map here, you'll see exactly why that's the case, and why doing this sort of reading guide as a pictorial map is so helpful. What actually happens is whilst here we've got Secret Invasion, after Secret Invasion, your reading order splits into two equal options, and it's really important to keep that in mind. What happens is that the series, which we've been calling the Thunderbolts, continues here on the right, with these issues on the right here, which we're going to talk about in a moment. At the same time, the new series, which is called Dark Avengers, launches here on the left and happens in parallel or at the same time as the Thunderbolt series. Now, whilst Thunderbolts changed writers to Andy Diggle, Dark Avengers had Brian Michael Bendis writing it at the same time that he was writing two other Avengers line. We'll talk more about Bendis and what he's up to in just a moment. So if it's that simple, you're probably wondering why I haven't just continued my Thunderbolt series straight down in a line and then had the Dark Avengers next to it as a separate series, like a bit of an optional side story. In other words, why have I made my map like this so that it's an equal choice for you, the reader, to choose what route to go down? Surely we should just follow along the main series on the right that is called Thunderbolt. Well, the reason I've done that is as follows, and it's important to keep this in mind because it's, it's a little bit complicated. All the characters from the Thunderbolts that we've been reading, up to and including the events of Secret Invasion, they all move over to star in the new Dark Avengers series, the one over here on the right, sorry, uh, on the left. However, the actual series called Thunderbolts continues over here on the right. However, it has a completely new set of characters in it. That's why I've split this up in two here, because it's not actually a straightforward decision. It's not as simple as saying, oh, you should just follow the Thunderbolts line along. That's fine. Instead, you have a choice to make. Do you want to follow the series on the right, or do you want to follow the characters on the left? Either way, you're not following a creative team, because both of these have new ones. Warren Ellis isn't involved, and Christos Gage, who wrote the Secret Invasion story here, isn't involved either. So really, this is a choice for you, the reader, to make for yourself. Which one of these two routes are you going to go down? You do need to go down both in the end, and then you end up at the same place, which we'll talk about soon enough. But the choice is really which one should you go down first. It's totally up to you. Now, for my money, I personally would recommend going down the Dark Avengers path first. That's what I did. That's what I'm going to talk through now, and hopefully it'll make sense. But if you don't want to do that, you can always go down the Thunderbolts line first and then come back to Dark Avengers, okay? It's entirely up to you. But for the sake of this reading order, we're going to start off with the Dark Avengers path, so let's go here. So we've gone from Thunderbolts Secret Invasion, and we've then gone to this collection here. So this is Dark Avengers Volume 1. This particular collection is called Dark Avengers Assemble and collects issues 1 to 6. It's available as a standard size hardcover and a standard size paperback with that cover. Fair enough. Then we move on to another circle, and unfortunately, this is where things immediately get weird. You see, this that you can see here, which says Utopia, as you can see, or you probably can't see because the font's kind of black on black, it's called Utopia, and then it's got a subtitle, Avengers X-Men. Now, the reason for that is that Dark Avengers issues 7 and 8 form an essential part of a much larger event called Dark Avengers Uncanny X-Men Utopia. It's a crossover event. This is cut in its own trade paperback, and you can see the cover of that here, and also as an oversized hardcover that's out of print. Now, it's oversized, not standard size. Just keep that in mind. You can see the exact issues contained in this Utopia crossover event here. So here you can see it starts off with an issue called Dark Avengers Uncanny X-Men Utopia. 
It then has Uncanny X-Men 513, Dark Avengers 7, Uncanny X-Men 514, Dark Avengers 8, Dark Avengers Uncanny X-Men Exodus, which is kind of the end of it. And then you have a bunch of kind of like epilogue issues or issues that are just elsewhere within the event. So you have Dark X-Men Confessions, you have X-Men Legacy issues 226 and 227. You have Dark Reign The Cabal. Like I said, a lot of comics of this era have Dark Reign as a prefix or a suffix. Don't let that worry you. And finally, there's three issues of Dark X-Men called The Beginning. Now, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, well, the one that ends called Utopia is the start, and the one that ends called Exodus is the end. So why are there all these issues afterwards? This has obviously been mapped by an idiot. Um, I don't blame you for thinking that. I thought that when I was reading it. And then when I read it, I was actually like, this mapping works quite well. Like it does start with the Utopia one shot, and it does end with the Exodus one shot. But then all the tie-in stuff you read after that, the confessions, the cabal, the beginning, it's like, yeah, actually, this adds some nice context and kind of filler and extra features. But I'm glad I didn't read this during the main sequencing of the event because it would have made it feel bloated and silly. So actually, this is one of these things where it's like, well, this is actually well mapped, surprisingly enough. Now, remember, in this list, these two Dark Avengers issues we're talking about, issue seven and eight, are collected nowhere else. Nowhere else. So let's go back to our map here. There's the Utopia event. Let's pan out a little bit and we'll see that before we go on to the next collection of Dark Avengers, we need to touch upon a often neglected mini series, which I've got pointing off to the left. And that's this series here. This is called Dark Avengers Ares. It's a three issue mini series by Kieran Gillen. It's not bad. It's available in a trade paperback collection, but that trade paperback collection, I mean, a three issue trade paperback collection would be ridiculous. So that trade paperback collection actually collects it with another standalone Ares miniseries in that paperback. Um, so if you pick it up, you end up picking up like other issues as well. Or you could pick up the three single issues or you can read it on um, Marvel Unlimited. In terms of when to read this, this is the best time to read this. Trust me, I don't want to give any spoilers. I don't want to talk about other stuff that happens in the series. But if you're going to read this, it fits in here in continuity. If, if you skip it, fine. Skip it, read loads of other stuff, and then come back to it later. It's fine as just a standalone series. But if you want to read it in sequence, then Dark Avengers Ares, which everyone seems to forget about, fits in here. Uh, by the way, on Marvel Unlimited, it's under D for Dark Avengers Ares. So this is definitely part of the Dark Avengers series. Anyway, whether you read that or not, the next thing we have is the second collection um, of the Dark Avengers, which is called Molecule Man. Now, this collects issues 9 to 12. Not very many issues at all, but remember, issues 7 and 8 are not collected except from in that Utopia event. And this collection here, Molecule Man, is available as a standard size hardcover and also as a paperback. That then takes us to this, which is the very last Dark Avengers collection. This is Dark Avengers Volume 3 and it's called Siege because it's a tie into the Siege event. It's available as a standard size hardcover and also as a paperback. It also requires some background knowledge of the Siege event. So you'll see here if we pan out and I just look over, you'll see I've got an image of the Siege event here because it happens in parallel with all these uh, all these other events happening at the same time. So in terms of reading Siege, you can obviously Wikipedia it, but it's up to you. The reading order within this particular volume, Dark Avengers Volume 3, is as follows. It's Annual 1 of Dark Avengers. Then it has Dark Avengers 13 to 15. Then it has the events of Siege. And then it has Dark Avengers 16. For what it's worth, and this is purely me, I would strongly recommend reading Siege in between issues 15 and 16, because that's when the events of Siege really happen. Now, Dark Avengers still makes sense if you only know the basic outline of Siege. In other words, if you've just read it on Wikipedia and stuff. But firstly, Siege is a really good event. Like, it's a really fun final event. And secondly, if you're going to read Siege, it's, it's going to be really important to know when a lot of the details about what happens in Siege when we get to the Thunderbolts um, circle, which is right here, which we'll talk about in a second. But before I want to talk about that, I just want to have another moment just to look over the Dark Avengers here on the left hand side. Before we move on from this, I do need to mention what you can see on the screen now. 
This is the oversized hardcover of Dark Avengers by Brian Michael Bendis. It collects issues 1 to 6 and issues 9 to 16 and annual 1. That means it collects exactly the same as the three smaller hardcover collections we just discussed. And yes, that also means it misses out the two issues that are part of the Utopia event, and it misses out Dark Avengers Ares. Again, let me stress, if you want to read those two missing issues, you need to pick up the Utopia paperback or the oversized hardcover. The oversized hardcover is a good call if you have this oversized hardcover because they will line up perfectly on your bookshelf. So back to the map here. So we're still in this area where things got a little bit confusing because everything's split to Dark Avengers on the left and Thunderbolts on the right. And now we're going to go and look at the Thunderbolts on the right. Before we do so, I'm just going to point out, I really do hope that you're going to go and read the event Siege at this point. Because Siege contains lots and lots of tie-ins. And whilst you only need to read the core series, as I mentioned, the core series is really important because of what we're about to talk about. Now, if you go back up to here where we originally made our choice and we decided to go to the left and look at Dark Avengers. This time around, we're going to go to the right and look at Thunderbolts. And it's really interesting to see how well this parallels what's going on in the Dark Avengers line at the same time. As I mentioned, keep in mind, this happens exactly in parallel, exactly at the same time. When issue one of Dark Avengers came out, issue one of, well, the first issue of the Thunderbolts one came out. Um... Now, for this new era of Thunderbolts, which you can see here, Andy Diggle replaced Christos Gage as the new ongoing writer, starting in issue 126. So issue 126 came out at the same time as issue one of Dark Avengers, and then things just ticked along together in tandem from then. Okay, so this particular volume is called Burning Down the House. I just trying to read that there. And that's the cover you have there. It's available as a paperback and it's available as a standard size hardcover. It collects issues 126 to 129 and also issue 132. Oddly enough, this has no volume number on the spine. So if you've been counting, well, you can give up now because none of it makes any sense. It represents kind of a grittier, soft reboot. And like I say, it's, said, it's set parallel to Dark Avengers. As a result of that, the eagle-eyed amongst you will realise that I've just pointed out this issue, whilst it goes from 126 to 132, it misses out issues 130 and 131. And the reason for that is that we're about to come across kind of weird crossover hiccup. Now, you'll remember that over in Dark Avengers, we lost two issues to the Utopia event. Well, at the same time, like I say, these things stay very much in lockstep when they're going parallel. At the same time, we lose two issues to this weird kind of event here. So this is an event called Dark Rain, Deadpool Thunderbolts. And these issues were released at the same time as the missing Dark Avengers issues that aren't collected. So basically, it forms this crossover event with Deadpool. Now, it's only four issues long. And if you pick up this trade paperback collection, it's a very slim one. It contains Deadpool issue eight, Thunderbolts 130, Deadpool issue 9, and Thunderbolts 131. A quick word of warning, if you're looking for this on Comixology or anything like that, it's collected under Deadpool for some reason. I don't know why, but it just is. Anyway, those are the issues it contains, and that's the order it contains them in. If we go back to the map and just look and zoom down here, you'll see there's another collection which is Thunderbolt's Widowmaker. Again, this is written by Andy Diggle, and again, it has no number on the spine. It collects issues 133 to 137. It's available as a standard size hardcover, as well as a paperback. Something to keep in mind is that it segues into the Secret Warrior series, um, written by Jonathan Hickman at the same time. In fact, issue eight of that is set directly after Thunderbolt's issue 135. But both series read okay by themselves, but they definitely complement each other really well. I'm a really big Secret Warriors fan, so this was a lovely thing to discover, and I had to run out and make sure I got the hardcover of Widowmaker as soon as possible. And then continuing down, we have, much like we had with Dark Avengers, we have the Siege issue. So Thunderbolts, Siege, it looks pretty similar to Dark Avengers Siege, and in fact, all the collections for Siege tie-ins have this same kind of look, purple on one side, picture on the other, Siege written in a particular way. So this collection here isn't written by Andy Diggle. It's written by a new writer called Jeff Parker. 
Parker pilots the title through the end of the Dark Reign era and even features a crossover with the Agents of Atlas team that he's also writing at the time, and then moves into the Siege event. As I mentioned, Siege has had many tie-ins which were not very good, and this is a perfect example of a not very good tie-in. Following this, the team is revamped again. Anyway, this uh, collection here, the Siege collection, contains issues 138 to 143. It requires some pretty substantial and hefty background knowledge of the Siege event to make that make sense. Whereas the Dark Avengers Siege volume was kind of readable without knowing much about Siege, this is basically unreadable. Um, the arc is mediocre. And the siege issues are basically irrelevant, and I wasn't a big fan of it, to be honest. Um, do yourself a favour. I mean, read it if you want to, but just read the siege event itself. Um, it'll just make more sense anyway. Following the Dark Reign era, which ends um, exactly here, which is when these uh, these comic lines come back together, and we then start looking at the next set of comics. Um, following the Dark Reign era, we enter an era called the Heroic Age. Now, the Heroic Age is something which you need to remember is like Dark Reign, and that is not a specific comic, it's not a specific series, it's not even really an event. It's more like a line-wide brand or theme, and it's kind of a reaction to Dark Reign. It's when things start getting much more positive and much more bright, and do you know what? We've covered a lot today already. Let's draw a line under it there, and let's come back to talk about the Heroic Age next time. As always, this map is available on my website for you to download free of charge. If you want to download it or print it out to follow along, please do so. It covers 339 issues, so it's for the best. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, where I tend to post a one-tweet daily review of whatever I read. And given I read, on average, around half a dozen comic issues a day, it's a great way to see what I'm up to and to get an idea for what future videos I'm planning. If you want to support the channel, it's really easy. Head over to Amazon and pick up the first volume of my prose superhero novel, No Gods or Kings. Um, each volume of this costs less than a dollar, or in fact, they're free if you have Kindle Unlimited. There are stories about a world like our own, but where superhumans are a reality. And there are a planned series of nine novels. The first four of them are already out. If you want to read a free excerpt of the first book, it can be found on the same website as this reading map, which is nogodsorkings.com. The link is in the description below. Until next time, everybody, stay classy.